Now, that right there was an impact, folks. This is AMD's Richland family of APUs, and the only thing more impactful than an APU on the low-end gaming experience is probably my hand, because it hurt from that. So let's go through the basics. I'm going to be using the A10 6800K to make most of my points. So first of all, this is a K-series processor, meaning it is unlocked and overclocking ready. Second of all, it is clocked at 4.1 gigahertz base, and it can turbo up to 4.4 gigahertz. That means that the 5800K that it replaces is slower, not only in terms of the base CPU clock speed, but also the boost clock speed. And the graphics cores have been increased in terms of speed as well. Now, now, just because they've updated something doesn't mean they've updated the platform. For a while there, AMD had a thing going where they had FM1 and FM2, and it was like the first gen APU and next gen, next gen APU. It was like, what was going on? People didn't understand it. They're doing away with that. So FM2 was the last gen APU, FM2 is the current 6000 series APU, and FM2 is going to be the next generation of APU where we are going to see an even tighter integration between the CPU and GPU, the Radeon part components, of this processor. So what that pretty much means is that APU isn't just about entry-level gaming anymore. So you're going to be able to pick up one of these on an FM2 platform. You're going to get a great entry-level system experience. We've documented this before on NCIX Tech Tips, how the APU compared to other integrated GPU solutions just demolishes other solutions for low-end gaming, but with the new heterogeneous architecture, so HSA, it is going to enable this processor to use the CPU for certain things and the GPU for other things. This is going to enable dramatically better performance, not only in games, but in things like facial recognition. So next generation computing technologies that will rely on more than just a fast CPU. Now this particular one is a quad core, but there is a wide range of processors available. And really what you want to think about is if I was buying a sort of an entry level computer now, or even a mid range computer now, do I want something that will be upgradable later and will have much more capability later in addition to allowing my kids to play some games, or do I not want that? And that's what makes the APU look like a great solution. They also support now with this new generation, DDR3 2133 megahertz out of the box compared to 1866 last time around. And the last point I'd like to bring up is that if you have any doubt about the direction AMD is moving in terms of this integration and whether we're actually gonna end up there, have a look at the next gen consoles. Both the Xbox One and the PS4 are using some variation of pretty much this. And given how long the last gen consoles lasted us, about eight years, I think it's pretty safe to say that this kind of paradigm shifting way of thinking about computing is, um, yeah, it's happening, folks. Thanks for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips on the AMD Richland family of APUs. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.com.